Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to ATOD number three. This is the reverse captain's mode tournament set up by Join Dota. Thank you for joining us. I am Mott. With me today is, of course, Illusion. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm really excited for this. Bananas versus RDK or Infinity Stack. It should be a great match. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one, but immediately already coming out is a DC from Bananas. Infinity disconnecting. I'm not sure if that's because we're getting a remake or if he just disconnected or whatever. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be great. For those of you that don't know how this works exactly, um, what we're going to see here... Oh, I guess we are getting a remake. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know, actually. Well, never mind. Until I see everybody start going, and since Arctic is already banning, then, you know... Anyways, as I was saying, um, this is how it really works. You ban out just like a normal ban phase would go in uh, Captain's Mode, but you really want to ban heroes that you don't want to play because what's going to happen is whoever has first pick, in this case Arctic, will ban out, or excuse me, will pick a hero for Infinity. Then Infinity has the choice of picking two heroes for Arctic, and it goes on that way. So you're just picking for the other team, essentially. Now, what you need, you need one Intelligence, one Strength, and one Agi hero, as well as two ranged on the same team in order for your composition to be viable and to be accepted here in the game. Now, I want to welcome you all. This is, of course, the American group stage. I really appreciate you guys joining us here. Uh, looking at the bands already, of course, Meepo ban, not a big surprise there, and Ar uh, Arctic banning the Spectre as well. Um, also, this is sort of a quasi-group stage. There's going to be three games played with a total of six teams in each group stage, and the top two teams will qualify to the single elimination playoffs. All games are best of one, except for the grand finals, so keep that in mind. Um, as well as, of course, the tiebreaker being more kills. So, that being said, and I've got all that out of my system right now, uh, what do, what kind of bands do you expect to see? Who do you think they don't want to play right now on both sides, Illusion? Well, I think what's interesting about Reverse Captain's Draft is it's very much like a Captain's Draft except backwards. You know, with a Captain's Draft, you want to ban out the heroes that you don't want to see the enemy team picking. What I would expect from a Reverse Captain's Draft is you would ban out heroes that you think no one on your team wants to play. And in the same light, you know, you kind of want to, in a normal draft, you want to ban out the heroes that you think the enemies are going to pick, where, or you want to also pick heroes that you think are going to be good with. With a reverse captain's draft, I can definitely expect uh, some reactionary picks. Pick heroes uh, for the other team that you know your original team is going to be good against. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a good point. I mean, you want to, like, if you can set up a you know slow moving heroes essentially making it easier for you to chase them essentially just getting plenty of uh, just making sure that you have plenty of disables uh against the opposing team or or, or don't give any uh a uh, don't give any disables to the opposing team or things of that nature. So, And I was talking about this with a, a few people earlier and, and, and just really, a lot of people ban out the really hard uh, and not, the really difficult to play carries and carries that are not necessarily good. As you can see by these four bands, the Meepo, Bloodseeker, Spectre, and Medusa, all carries, all of which take either enormous amounts of farm or just aren't really that great in the game today. So right now, Arctic is going to be picking for Infinity plus four, uh, and there's a bunch of different options they have here. Uh, usually you can see, I, I, I'd expect something like perhaps a, a Spirit Breaker, uh, perhaps, a, I don't know, a Riki. You know, these, these heroes sometimes work well in conjunction with these reverse captains modes. So um, I'm not really I sure. I definitely expect to see like a sniper or something. You know, a lot of the slower heroes with no escapes, definitely like no one with a blink or an invis, just because that's just that much more house for your team. Yeah, uh, definitely, you know, short range. Maybe, maybe you know, I think Sniper's definitely a, a viable choice here. Even He can count as a ranged and also very easy to gank hero. Absolutely, but also, I've seen Snipers be efficient from time to time. So, you know, keep that in mind. I, I think uh, I, I think that he certainly is a, one, of the peop one of the heroes that could be picked here for them. But they're going to go with Disruptor instead, which is definitely an interesting choice. Um... I don't think it's the worst choice, but it's not the best choice either. I think that Disruptor is a great uh, support and when viable, but he's not really viable in the current metagame just because he doesn't really work well on a tri lane when you think about it. So Infinity plus four are going to have to use Disruptor. They could even potentially send him mid. Uh, do you think they would do that, or do you think they would rather send him into uh, support capacity? I mean, I think it really is going to depend on how the rest of their team is going to look like. Disruptor, like, as you said, isn't that, you know, isn't that common nowadays, but I remember I Bulba used to run good. him a lot. Definitely during the mid game, his glimpse is just such a strong ability to be able to pick people off, yeah. or if people are TPing in to defend towers, he can send them back. He's a very versatile choice, so I'm actually kind of surprised that Infinity is choosing to draft him for Arctic, but uh, we'll have to see who else they draft for their team. 
Yeah, absolutely. So Infinity now going to pick two heroes for Arctic to play right now in just a moment. As you can see, they're waiting. They do have that reserve time, and Arctic will pick up those heroes as soon as uh, Infinity decides to... Well, I guess I should say Universe. He's the one picking for the side of Bananas or Infinity Plus 4. They're going to pick up a Huskar here for Arctic, and that's not a surprise to me at all. But he's one of those heroes that I think in the mid-game, if he can get the farm, if he can get the kills, can certainly be strong. But, oh, a Skeleton King coming right up as well. Another hero that really requires quite a bit of farm to be effective, but that ult can be kind of uh, annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Uh, one of the things with Huskar is that he kind of he has a s decent laning phase. The thing is, if with a good team, you know, he gets bursted down quickly. So I think what Infinity wants to do is because they know they have a Huskar and Skeleton King, they want to pick heroes that they know are going to be weak against both the Huskar and Skeleton King. So, well, I guess it, right now it's Arctic's turn to pick another hero. Yeah, Arctic so, will pick a hero, we'll and wait. it's going to go over to Infinity's team, and Infinity now has the Earthshaker, so, and Arctic will pick another hero for Infinity to take, so Infinity's lineup right now, Disruptor, Earthshaker, and Riki are going to be played, so uh, that's actually not necessarily the worst lineup in the world right now. In fact, I, I much prefer Infinity's uh, first three heroes than Arctic's uh, first two. You have the Huskar who could potentially go mid for Arctic, and, and Skeleton King, of course, can be in his, you know, whatever lane as long as he's getting some farm. But with Infinity plus four, they've got the Disruptor and the Earthshaker. Those are both very versatile heroes that could actually be very aggressive in a trial lane together. On top of that, you have Riki, who is, yes, he's countered very easily with just some simple true sight, but at the same time, he can also deal quite a bit of damage with his backstab as well. So, Infinity seem looking a lot stronger, and I'm very surprised they gave them that Earthshaker. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised Arctic gave him that Earthshaker. So, right now, one more uh, pick here. Infinity's going to send over another hero to the side of Arctic, and I mean, what do you think about the lineup right now for Infinity? I think they've got a pretty good team, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, these are, Disruptor, Earthshaker, and Ricky are all heroes who have seen, you know, some you've seen them in competitive Dota here and there, oh, and there's the sniper pick. Damn, uh, you're right on with that! Wow. Yeah, and especially with the, the those three heroes, Huskar, Skeleton King, Sniper, all very farm reliant. All of them need items. Uh, none of them can really scale that well with levels. I mean, you could kind of run Skeleton King as a you know an aura carrier with a stun, but uh, I don't know. It really depends on what the last two picks are. Absolutely. And we're going to see some bans real quick. Arctic's actually banning the OD, which is an interesting ban coming out for them. I, I think they realize that. Um, well, I don't know. I, I, I personally don't mind seeing Outworld Devourer. I think he's a very good hero, so it's surprising that they ban that. Um, what we've got now in terms of the rules, uh, remember one in one agi, one strength, two ranged. You've got two ranged on the side of Arctic already, one agi, one strength, well two strength really. And they just need one in to round out their lineup. So Infinity plus four has got to send that over. There's one in one strength and one agi on the side of Infinity plus four, and they only have one range. So they just need another range to round out that lineup. So we're gonna see some more bands real quick. Nice ban of the morphling, I think, from Infinity plus four. The clinks as well, interesting, but sort of I think they're just trying to avoid being really squishy, which is a smart play there. Zeus and the Anti-Mage band coming out from Arctic, and uh, they just want to avoid using a lot of carries, so I, I don't blame them. Right, and for our last band, uh, I'm really, I, you know, with such a, with the reverse captain's trap, you know, it's really hard to ban out all the heroes that you don't want to see on your team. Um, you know, one interesting strategy I could see is if you, if other teams haven't picked the two range, then you could ban out more the the weaker range carries and force them to pick, you know, a semi-good range carry, but it seems, I don't know, each of them have one range in their team already, and I don't know, I, I really don't know what to say, this is, this could really go anywhere. It's hard to theorycraft reverse captain's mind, I mean, I'll give you that, like, this is the most difficult thing in the world, because when you're, when you're casting, I think, a captain's mode game in, in the current metagame, you understand what's happening with trends, you know, who's playing what, how they're playing it, like how Nature's Prophet's been, you know, really, really strong recently and things of that nature. There are no trends in reverse captain's mode. It's more sort of like, okay, I guess we're going to do this. Let's see what happens, guys. And it ends up working or it doesn't work. So they're going to ban PA with their last one there. Uh, Arctic's going to send over Faceless Void to the side of Infinity, which I still think that's not the best pickup for Arctic to give to Infinity, but... But, you know, then again, doesn't really, my opinion, of course, not really valid until we actually see this game starting. But uh, keep in mind, of course, I want to remind you guys of a few things. These are best of ones, of course, with Infinity Plus 4 and Arctic. I'd like to welcome all of our Peruvian viewers. Unfortunately, I do not speak Spanish. I believe there is a Spanish caster in the lobby. So if you want to go look for him, you may. Um, 
No hard feelings here. Arctic as well. Of course, they're going to get another hero from Infinity Plus 4 in just a moment. What do you think about that Faceless Void pickup? You know, they're setting them up with all these big AOE like ultimates. You know, you got you got two silences between Disruptor and Ricky. You got you know early ganking potential with the Earthshaker, even the Disruptor. Uh, they have two, I mean, decent melee carries. I, I'm just really curious what their strategy here is. I I feel like there's something that should be tying it all together, but right now I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, last pickup here, or excuse me, second to last pickup from Infinity Plus 4 over to Arctic is going to be the Necrolite. So there is that uh, Intelligence Hero, but also a ranged hero as well. So uh, everything is complete in terms of uh, the lineup for Arctic. They just need another hero picked up from Infinity. Infinity still needs that second ranged hero to be brought over from Arctic. And in just a moment, we'll find out what that's going to be. Not a whole lot of reserve time left. Necrolite, definitely an interesting pick. Uh, there's not... What I love about Infinity's plan here is they're not giving them a whole a whole lot of AoE in comparison to like what you talked about with Infinity Plus 4. There's a ton of AoE. Uh, and the Viper is going to be the last pickup here being sent over from Arctic. But you see what I mean with the AoE and the not AoE kind of lineups? You, you see what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. Because like, the thing with the, the Arctic team, you know, there's a lot of single target abilities. You have the stun. I mean, all their ults are all single target. Necrolite has a little bit of AoE with his death pulse, but his ult is also, again, single target ability. Um, I mean, I guess like their game plan must be to, they'd be forced to pick people off where Infinity's team can really look for those big team fights. They can group as five and just try and outplay the opponents. Absolutely. We'll see if they can do that, of course. And 15 seconds left here on reserve time for Infinity Plus 4. They're going to send another hero over to Arctic. They have their choice, the pick of the litter, whatever is not banned at this point or has already been picked up. So uh, this is going to be a good one, I think. And they're going to go with Shadow Fiend. Wow. Look at all of those carries, man. That is carry central. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that's, they got three ranged on that team. So I don't know. Maybe, I, I'm really curious how this is going to be laned because there is actually only one melee on the Arctic team which means that the the aura from Skeleton King doesn't really synergize with anyone else on his team. That's definitely true. That's also very... Maybe they thought about that when they were drafting on the side of Infinity. I'd have to think that they did, but um, looking at the lineup right now, if who do you give the farm to? I'd say, in my opinion, you, you make Necrolite a support at this point. Shadowfiend, I think, has to carry just because he carries harder than anybody on that team. Um, and then I don't know what else you do with the rest of the team. Right, I think I think the Huskar, the Sniper, and the Shadow Fiend would have to be the three cores for Arctic, Ten and then seconds. you know Viper faces Void Ricky for the other one because they have two supports. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, seems too obvious, but so we are going to get a pause as we jump into the game. Bathroom is called from Infinity, so already some uh, bladder problems, but don't worry about that. We're going to jump into the game in just a moment as soon as he's back. Going to get some. Uh, introductions here real quick on the side of bananas aka infinity plus four we're going to have infinity on the viper clairvoyance will be on the Riki. we're going to see universe from dig toss on the faces void bananas in your face on the disruptor and kzz on the earth shaker it's an all na dota team up in here really great team there if you're familiar with na dota and arctic they're no slouch either iwo will be on the shadow fiend we're going to see mst co on the skeleton king smash on the huskar mihawk on the necrolite and daiko on the sniper and so this is going to be interesting, thinking about how they're going to lane things. Honestly, they could do a tri lane if they really wanted to on the side of Bananas. Will they? I'm not so sure. I think you probably send Infinity mid uh, on that Viper. Um, maybe, I don't really know. I think you sent... Uh, and... I think that's right. I think that's right. You know, you have the uh, Viper mid, and then you have your two supports. You know, you, have two, you run two dual lanes, unless you want to, you know, sock, you know, run a tri lane which, I mean, you really don't have the heroes for it. You can't really send one of the cores in a solo lane out. But maybe, I don't know, Universe is the, uh, the YYF of the West, supposedly, so maybe <laughs> he might solo that long way. <laughs> You're inflating his ego, my friend, but I'm say, <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Um, yeah, I just I, uh, right now Arctic's actually not ready. Infinity is actually back from his b uh, bathroom break, so we'll jump into the game in just a moment, but... Uh, looking at the side of Arctic and how they're going to land this, this is more sort of a uh, shenanigan fest, I guess, if you uh, right. would like to call it that. It's very difficult to understand how this is going to be laned. I think you probably send... Well, if you look at sending Viper mid, I think that if you send Shadowfiend mid against Viper, Viper could probably have a pretty good time against that Shadowfiend, so I'm not sure if they're going to do that. I mean, I, I, my initial impression was, so yeah, send the Shadowfiend mid, but I mean, Viper is just a, such a strong solo laner. I mean, where he falls apart, why he isn't picked really competitively, is that he doesn't have that much utility, and you know, he's a mid-game damage hero. 
and he's easy to gank. But the thing is, you don't really have any gankers on Arctic's team. You can, I mean, you could send in the the Skeleton King with a stun, but after that, where do you go? Um, I think you might have to send the Shadow King in mid, even though he might have a terrible time. Yeah, and I think this this is just a rough game for Arctic overall. If they can pull this out, I'd be super impressed. Keep in mind, they have another game after this one. I believe it is up, a, up against Team Typical Mistakes. I could be wrong. Um, so we'll see how that does pan out. And you're going to already say Spitwad in chat, and they do to won the draft. Well, that remains to be seen. But, uh, yeah, Ham Sandwich, I agree with you. Any ETA, I would like to really get in this game. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what's going to happen here. Just waiting, of course. Mm-hmm. But thanks for joining us, guys, here on Neo Dota. All of the VODs from tonight will be available on YouTube.com slash Neo Dota 2, so you can check those out there. There were, uh, I want to keep, I want to remind you guys that the, the way that uh, one of the teams got into the America uh, group stages, typical mistakes, was through a qualifier, which was 5v5 all mid, and it was some of the funnest stuff I've ever seen in a Dota game. It, it was all, also the same hero, by the way. So you'd see Marana going mid, uh, you know, all five heroes of people playing Marana, and there was just arrows left and right. It was the craziest stuff. You can check out those VODs on uh, the Neo Dota 2 YouTube channel. A lot of fun. Me and Spitwad did those casts, so uh, Arctic's still ca calling for two minutes right now. I think they're just trying to figure out how they're going to lane this, and they're taking this very seriously, which I do appreciate, but at the same time, you know, you want to be a little bit more uh, expedient about things here, but at the same time, it looks like Infinity seems probably pretty comfortable with what they're going to be doing, um, and that's not a big surprise. So, and I just so what do you build if you're a support on any of these heroes on the Radiant side on Arctic side like how do you support Sniper or support like SK or something like that what exactly would you build I mean that's that's just a really good question uh, I mean as a support Skeleton King I mean I'm assuming you would start with your your basic you know, wards, regen, uh, courier, etc., and you just try and pull the camps, try and get some levels. Uh, definitely with the Skeleton King, I mean, his aura is actually pretty decent, but the thing is, no one can utilize it except for him, so I wouldn't be surprised if I saw him as, you know, maxing the, uh, the stun and his uh, his ultimate, maybe his crit for later, and then just building, <laughs> building mana and regen so you can spam all of that in a fight, you know, just a utility stun hero. But, uh, I mean, beyond that, I mean, you get your mech on your Necrolite, possibly, and pipe against the AoE that they drafted for the other team. I, I really don't know where they go from here. <laughs> that they drafted for the other team. That's the best, yeah. thing. That's the best thing about this. It's just like, you think, like, well, why? Why did they choose those pickups? And and, and, and I guess maybe it's varying play, style, play styles, different play styles. I mean, it, you know, Arctic might hate, you know, right. playing Disruptor or something like that, but... On his side maybe maybe like in Dota. Before, but yeah, exactly. I'm I mean, assuming the meta is just very different over there. <laughs> right, exactly. So we'll see how this does pan out, and we're still waiting. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how long we're going to wait for. I apologize for the delay. Everybody in chat is 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 looking forward to this game, and I am as well. But still, I'm just waiting on Arctic at this point in time, and <coughs> there's only so much theory crafting you can do in reverse captain's mode, guys. Um, right. I would love. I would love if we were wrong. You know, at some point they switch it up. Maybe you know, have their skeleton king mid against a disruptor. That would be like crazy. It'd be like, well, <laughs> we weren't expecting that, huh? We spent like twenty minutes theory crafting, and all of a sudden everything's gone. But uh, I mean, stranger things have happened, and it's it's a tide. Anything can happen right now. So. Um, yeah, definitely. If you're down for laning, just jungle everybody. I mean, it, it it could work. It could definitely work. Or that works too, sort of. <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't know how long we're gonna stay paused for, but once again, we have no control over these things. So you know me. One of my friends likes to run a Skeleton King in the jungle, even though it's absolutely terrible. But it's definitely, I mean, it kind of works if you don't have too much pressure going on. 
I mean, with this reverse captain's draft, it really comes down to how well do you know the enemy's heroes and your heroes, because you can just assume that you won't have too much synergy with your own team. And before I continue, the game's starting. It is absolutely starting. I am so happy right now. Excellent stuff here. Um, but yeah, and you make up a good point. Um, I talked with uh, a friend of mine once. I was playing a game with him. Um, he used to be on Fnatic NA Rolo, and he said that you could potentially farm any any person in the jungle, really, and make it work. You just have to know how to do that. Obviously, it's a lot more difficult for uh, some than others, but you know we'll see how this does pan out. Looking at it right now, we're going to see MST Co. going up into the top lane. Like we predicted, Shadow Fiend is going to head mid. Bottom is going to be a Huskar currently. Going with him top in the Skeleton King is going to be, of course, the Necrolite. And still waiting is going to be uh, Daiko, who is... Uh, sitting here as Sniper, he hasn't really purchased anything yet, he still has 603 gold. It's a nice little courier they've got. Meanwhile, Clairvoyance on the Ricky heading into his own jungle. Going to see mid-universe, by the way, on the Faceless Void. Aggressive Tri-Lane coming out with Infinity on the Viper, Bananas in your face, my Disruptor, and of course KZZ on the Earthshaker. So they want to be bold up here, and this is actually a smart maneuver. This allows Clairvoyance to get farm and potentially stay safe because, of course, he is going to be in that solo safe lane. But they might just rotate around, of course. They're going to check out Roche real quick, make sure they're not doing anything crazy. Not that I think that they could. I, I don't think Arctic could get away with a level 1 Roche anyways. But uh, the game is going to start after much waiting and much uh, pause. Right. It's kind of interesting. They're both deciding to run an aggressive tri lane. They're running the SK and the Necrolite as supports, and having the sniper. I'm assuming is going to be the sniper as the main farmer, considering he didn't buy any. Well, I guess no one really bought any support items on the radiant side. No wards, and they have a courier, so it should be an interesting uh, matchup right here. Yeah, they have no vision. But speaking of vision, clairvoyance literally just took away an invis rune right out from beneath their three noses and you actually saw mst ko's animation for his stun go off almost and then he became invis right before so clairvoyance realizes that this is a tri lane up here he'll have to be potentially careful already roam coming in from kzz as well as of course the disruptor and they're gonna try to go here universe is gonna time walk in nice block in uh -oh. from kzz and arctic iwo is in some trouble glimpse as well they're gonna bring him right back that is first blood and universe is gonna take that just like that it's just too easy for them and that's what happens when you don't have that vision. They didn't even have to smoke up. They might have. In fact, they, there's still a smoke on the Disruptor, so they didn't use the smoke at all for that entire uh, gank there, which seemed to be a pretty big one, but still IWO is going to go down first, and Universe is going to grab level 2 quickly and a bunch of gold because of it. So that, we'll see how that does pan out later on in the game. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, the thing with Earthshaker and Disruptor is they're such strong early game heroes. Uh, you know, Earthshaker is not level dependent at all. Fisher is just such a strong ability. Oh. By breaking out on the bottom, Russian yeah, stun. Smash is in smash. some trouble right now, and Viper's going to take that kill. So already two for nothing here for Infinity's team, and and they're looking real strong here. Yeah, definitely not looking good for Arctic. Clairvoyance, you know, up in the top lane, actually has four CS, tied for top CS with everyone else. So he's not doing too badly. Yeah, and they need to be real aggressive up here, and it's going to be tough because they don't really have any disables, of course, except for the Skeleton King, who's just sitting back for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Roaming mid again is KZZ, of course, with the Disruptor. They're going to look for another gank right now. Uh, Shadowfiend will back off for the time being. He's thinking about staying right into the river, but he is going to back off. There still is no vision here for the Radiant side, so IW is being very careful, maybe because he knows that he's missing from bottom, the two heroes, I should say. Uh, he's looking for the top rune as well. It is going to spawn bottom, and it's going to be taken up by KZZ, or at least... Uh, just babysat for the moment, and yeah, CS looking good. Nine last hits for Infinity, nine for, of course, the Universe, and seven for Clairvoyance right now. So everybody's looking good on the side of Infinity Arctic. They need to get it together, but it's really weird to say that at two minutes into the game. Right, I mean, especially, I mean, their supports are Necrolite and Skeleton King, who, I mean, their gank consists of a level one Death Pulse and a level one Hellfire Blast. Realistically, they're not going to be able to effectively gank anyone until Necrolite gets Universe is gets jumping in pool. gank on IWO right now. There's going to be a lot of damage coming in. There was, of course, the Thundershock as well, Thunderstrike, excuse me, which allowed to help get that kill with Universe getting the right-click damage to provide the kill, and it's 3 nothing. Sorry to cut you off there. No, oh, wow. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, Arctic really got out-trafted here by, by themselves. Uh, That's unfortunate. You hate to see that happen. Yeah. Oh, Smash is getting orb walked by Infinity. Infinity, two more. Yeah, he's got it. No problem. Infinity will just walk right up and kill Huskar using his orbs. Do the job there. Nice job again. And IWO is going to keep mid. 
Uh, roaming back through, of course, is Bananas in your face. He does have that glimpse available, and he might use it in just a second. Will he use it now? He's got the vision? No, no vision there. They don't have any high ground vision, so they'll back off. Just going to provide some uh, damage on the side of IWO, but Huskar already back, actually TP'd mid, which might have deterred any sort of aggression coming from the side of the, the Dire here. But top lane, surprise Clairvoyance still isn't dead yet. I mean, yes, he... He actually does have that blink strike, making it very hard for him to be uh, killed. But meanwhile, mid lane, Fisher again, and IWO is going to go down once more. He is going to fall. Universe now has a killing spree. He has three kills. He's got 708 gold. He can honestly go Midas without a problem. Bottom lane, Infinity getting another kill this time on the Huskar. They're running away with it. Literally three minutes into the game, four minutes into the game. And this is exactly what we expected to happen. So Right. I mean, to be realistic, like, I mean, with already what you this badly, you know. Ideally, you, you need to have some rotations. You need to have you need to outnumber a lane and get some successful ganks off. You know, worst comes worst, you group as five and shove a tower. But at this, you know, at this rate, you know, they're gonna have their a their shaker and disruptor are gonna have their AOE ults way before uh, Arda can do anything about it. So if they group as group up as five, the AOE coming out from Infinity Stack is going to just outclass anything that Arda has. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Arctic, they're going to pick off a kill up top lane. They finally get their first, and that's going to be on Clairvoyance as they use some Shrapnel to push the tower as well. So that's a good pickup. That's uh, really where they need to start. They really need to take this top lane and, and, like you said, just get some tower pressure to play as five or something like that. But like you said, uh, the levels are going pretty well in favor of the side of Bananas here or Infinity. Uh, although they do have Disruptor as well as the Earthshaker at level 3. Meanwhile, Disrupt uh, there's going to be a fortification Excuse me, up in the top lane right now. They're going to try to stop this push here. Um, and they actually pulled the stack here. There's going to be a TP coming in. Uh, they can take this, though, before uh, they get in. Infinity's going to get a stun right to his face. There's a nice Fisher going on to Mihawk. They can keep going. Death Pulse going as well. No deaths except for the tower. Mihawk, nice glimpse coming in from Bananas in your face. MST Co getting chased after as well. He's got no mana. Meanwhile, KZZ trying to go on the Sniper alone. I'm going to keep following MST Co here. It looks like he will go down. The stun was about to go. Double kill for Clairvoyance. Infinity as well as KZZ taking the kill on the Sniper as well up here in the top lane. Everybody rotating through. Universe doing some right-click damage mid. And the Chronosphere. Here. He wants this kill. I don't know if he'll be able to get it. He's kind of tanking the tower right now. Not enough damage there. And, of course, the raises as well. So Universe will have to back off. But an aggressive play there. And, man, did Infinity clean up, even though they lost that tower. Right. This is, I mean, they did gain the tower, which is, you know, kind of slightly offsets the fact that all of their lanes lost horribly. Uh, you know, aside from top, kind of. But, you know, right now, they definitely have... They're on a timer right now. They really need to put some pressure on the other lanes, gain some, regain control of the game before all the ultimates, you know, before all of uh, Infinity's team hits level 6. Because once that happens, they're going to have a hard time grouping up and taking team fights, especially with all their single target, uh, single target abilities. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, and that's such a good point. And you talk about the levels, meanwhile, Infinity getting it killed on uh, Huskar bottom, but you talk about everybody's level right now, and... There is only one hero level 4, and that's the Earthshaker. Everyone else is either 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 at this point in time. So, Infinity right. plus 4, they're having a good time. They've got quite the experience lead. 4,000, gold is at 3,000, even with that tower kill. But now again, coming out of Universe here in mid lane. He'll time walk out. He smells it coming. There is no uh, Dire Ward on the other side where that gank was coming from. There's one here, though, which will provide a decent amount of vision, as you can see. But, uh, yeah, right now, Skeleton King, he does have his boots. He's got a magic stick as well, so he can go for that magic wand. But in terms of farm right now, Universe has treads completed, poor man's shield, and a bottle. Uh, what about Earthshaker? He's got boots already, and he's been a roaming, you know, support. Universe taking some sniper damage, the right clicks as well. Bananas in your face, he's got boots and wards. Looking at Infinity, he's got his phase boots and a ring of Basilius. Meanwhile, though, they're going to just try to push his five and look for a tower here. Fortification not available. The Chrono was already used. Mihawk's actually diving way through the tower here, just trying to get some right click damage on Universe. Shrapnel is going. KZC not level six yet. He's going to throw out a Fisher right now. It's going to hit three. Nice job there. Smash very low. Tower doing a lot of damage. Might not be able to survive this glimpse going. Universe Wants that kill. Has Chrono in one. Is he going to use it? Yes, absolutely. And Infinity's on the outside of it, too. Oh. KZZ, everybody's on the outside of it. IWO, he's going to go down. They ult on the sniper as well. MST Co is trapped in with that kinetic field. Daiko is going to go down. Double kill for Infinity right now. And they're going to take everything except for Mihawk, who gets away to the bottom lane. And it's 14 wow. to 1, ladies and gentlemen. And tap out. They tap out. Arctic is done. Yeah. That is it. 746 into the game. And FF is called. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not to, that was an amazing chronos here coming out of Universe, but I, I I really think that, I mean, Arctic kind of thought they were drafting for their own team or something, like, there's just so much that they gave away in that, those early, in the early levels, like, they had to understand 
what exactly they're drafting for their team and how to play against it. And it seems like they just kind of gave that up. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to jump into the next game in just a moment, guys. So give us a second. Thank you for joining us. Follow us on uh, Neo Dota at twitter.com slash Neo Dota 2. You can follow me at Mott Dota 2, and you can follow Illusion at Illusion Dota, I believe. Correct? That's right. All right. We're going to take a break real quick, guys. So we'll be right back. Hold on, hold on one second. Victory. 